Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the 10th video in the Ethernet series, and today we will see how to use the STM32 as the HTTP server. In today's video, I will create a very simple web server, which will use the get method for the request, and then display the web pages accordingly. Later we will cover a more detailed server using the Ajax, but that will be in the upcoming videos. Let's start the cube IDE, and create a new project. I am using the usual STM32 F750 discovery board. Give some name to the project, and click finish. Let me clear the pinouts. Alright let's start with the clock setup. I am using the external high speed crystal for the clock. The board has 25 MHz crystal, and the system is running at 200 MHz. Alright now go to the Ethernet, and enable the type of connection you have. As I mentioned earlier, this board have our MII connection type. Let's start with the parameter configuration first. Since we are using the onboard connector, the PHY address must be zero. Also change the RX mode to the interrupt mode. When you do this, you can see the Ethernet interrupt is enabled. Finally do check the pinouts, and match it with the schematics of your board. Also make sure that the speed is set to maximum. Next go to the free RTOS. I am enabling the version 2 of the CMSYS. No changes are needed to be made in the free RTOS. Just leave everything to default. You can see there is a default task created, and later the LWIP will use this task, so leave this too. I am enabling the new library reentrant, as it gives the error while generating the code. Now go to the LWIP. Here first of all we will disable the DHCP, and manually enter the IP address, subnet mask etc. You can see here, the RTOS usage is enabled by default, as we have enabled it already. Anyway, leave everything else to default in the general settings. In the key options, the only change we need to make is, increase the heap memory size. I am setting it to 10 kilobytes. So far we did the usual setup, whatever we did in the previous 3-4 videos. For the HTTP server, we need to enable the LWIP HTTPD. If all these options don't show up, you need to check this box. Let's leave everything to default here for now. Alright, if you are not using Cortex M7 based MCU, go ahead and generate the code. As I mentioned, I am using the F750 discovery board, and as ST recommends, we must enable the instruction and data cache for better processing. Also, this board has less flash memory, and it won't be able to store all the variables in the flash. That is why I am going to use the external flash memory, and for this purpose I must use the MPU. Set the MPU to background region privileged access only, plus MPU will be disabled during hard fault. Now enable the MPU region. The base address will be the address of the external flash, that is the QSPI, which is at 9 million hexa. The size will be 512 megabytes. And we will disable all the access in this region. As mentioned here in the memory description, the QSPI is in the block 4, which is 512 megabytes. 
This is why I blocked access to 512 megabytes of memory, so as to prevent the speculative access to this region. If you don't understand this part, watch the MPU configuration series in the Cortex M7 playlist. The link is in the description. The region 2 will start again at the 9 million hexa, and the size will be 16 megabytes. This is the actual size of the QSPI memory available on the board. Here we will permit the access, and we will set the region to cacheable, and bufferable. This was actually explained in my video about the memory configuration in Cortex M7 series MCU. We are trying to set this region as the normal memory region with the right back attribute. This is as according to the ST's recommendation for the QSPI memory configuration. We will create one more memory region at 9 million hexa, but this time we will enable the instruction execution from this region. This is it for the MPU configuration for the external flash. Click save to generate the code. Before we go any forward, let's build the code once. We will see a lot of errors, and we will resolve them one by one. Here we have the error about the fsdatacustom.c file. The file is not present in the directory. Double click the error to see where it occurred. Here we will go to the definition of the custom fs data, and set it to zero. So now we are not using the FS data custom file. Apparently there is no way to disable it in the cube setting, so we have to manually do it here. Now we have another error about FS data file, and it is also not present in the directory. You can go to middleware, third party, LWIP, source, apps, HTTP. Here you can see the FS data header file is present, but there is no source file. This file is actually generated based on your resources, and we need to use the make FS data application to do that. Here we have the FS folder, which consists of all the resources we have for this project. By default there are two HTML files, index and 404, and I am leaving them as it is. This is how our index file will look like. And this is how the 404 file will look. You can create any HTML file, and place it in this folder, and then generate the FS data file. As I mentioned I am keeping the files as it is, and we will copy all these files into our HTTP directory. Now double click the FS data application, and it will generate the FS data file for you. I will leave the link to this folder in the description below. Let's go back to our project, and build it again. We have 7 errors now, and most of them are about the multiple definitions. Now go to the FS data file we just created, and exclude it from the build. Let's build again. All the errors regarding the multiple definitions are gone now. This error about the flash overflow is specific to this board, as I mentioned that the flash has a low space, and this is why I configured the MPU for the external flash. Now I will set the flash to the external location, and this is done in the flash script file. If your board has enough flash memory, you don't need to do this. Alright there is one last error, and it is about the multiple definition of Erno. Let's go to this location, middleware, third party, LWIP, system, OS, sysarch.c. Here just comment out the definition of Erno. Alright, all the errors are gone now. Now since I have used the external flash, I need to relocate the vector table. 
Again this is specific to some boards, and if you did not set the external flash, you don't need to do this. This is our main file. Here the default task is created, and once this task will run, it will initialize the LWIP. Alright everything is set now, and it's time to ping. Since I am using the external flash, I need to use the external loader in the debugger. Let's run it now. Now we will ping to our IP address. You can see the ping is successful, so everything seems okay so far, and we can proceed ahead with it. Let's include the library files now. Here I have the HTTP server source and header files. Put the source file in the source directory, and header file in the include directory. The HTTP server header file only has one function, HTTP server in it. Let's see its implementation in the source file. The HTTP server in it creates a new HTTP thread, whose entry function is HTTP thread itself, the stack size is default, 1 kilobyte, and the priority is set to normal. Inside the HTTP thread, we will create a new netcon connection. The argument is netcon TCP, and it will create a new TCP connection. If the connection is created successfully, we will bind it to the local IP address. This is the same as the one we set in the cube MX, and this will be the address of the server. The port of the server is set to 80. Once the binding is successful, we will put the server in the listen mode. Now the connection will listen for any client which is trying to connect to this server. Once the client connects to this server, we will accept the connection. The netcon accept takes two arguments. The first argument is the TCP connection, which is listening to the client. And the second argument is the pointer, where the new connection is going to store. Our TCP listening connection is con, and we will store the new connection in the new con. Both of them are defined in the beginning of the function. Once the client connection is accepted by the server, we will call the HTTP server to handle the requests made by this client. In the HTTP server, we will receive the requests made by the client. Netcon receive takes two arguments. The first is the connection, and the second is the netbuff structure, where the request data is going to store. Next we will check what request was made by the client, and to do that, we will first get the data pointer and its length from the netbuff structure. Netbuff data takes three arguments here. The first is the netbuff structure, where we want to get the data from. Next is the pointer, where you want to store the data pointer to. And at last is the pointer, where the length should be stored. So now the data pointer is stored in buff, and the length is stored in buff len. Now we will compare the data in the data pointer to whatever requests you want to serve. For example, here I am checking if the client has requested the index.html. If it did, then we will open the file index.html. We will store the information about this file in the file structure. Now we will write this data to the connection. Netcon write takes four arguments. The connection, where the data is to be written. The data pointer, length of the data pointer, and the last one is the API flag. This API flag basically decides how the data will be written. For example the netcon copy will be used, 
if you want to copy the data into the memory belonging to the stack. Here we are using no copy, and it means the data will be simply written, without any conditions. After writing the data, we will close the file. So we served the request made by the client to get the index.html file. If you remember, I only have one file in the FS folder, and hence if any other request comes from the client, my server will show the 404 error page. You can see this in the else condition. Once the client request is served, we will close the connection, and delete the net buff. Finally we will delete the connection itself, so that a new client can make another request. This while loop will keep running, and the server will keep looking for the clients. Alright let's write the main code now. First of all we will include the HTTP header file. Now in the default task, after the LWIP is initialized, we will initialize the HTTP server also. This will eventually create a new HTTP thread, and everything will begin. Let's build and debug the code now. Let's open the index.html page. You can see the page is being displayed. If we request the 404 page, the server displays it perfectly. As I mentioned the server currently has two pages only, and if we request anything other than the index page, the server will show the 404 error. The HTTP basic server is working alright. In the future videos, we will cover the Ajax with the web server for the asynchronous loading. This is it for today's video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.